Hey everyone, I hope this has been a great week for you. We've had a chance to dig into the Bible and learn about some epic stories and some epic people this week. We started this journey by seeing how Jesus discovered Peter. You remember him and how much he was valued and loved. We learned about when Peter walked on water and as he faltered and doubted, he reached out for Jesus and Jesus was there. We saw how the followers of Jesus were changed by him. And here's the thing, in Jesus, we get changed, and it changes how other people see us. We read about Peter rejecting Jesus at one of the most difficult moments, but even then we see that our failures and struggles can be overcome. Today we're going to talk about victory, what it looks like and what it feels like when we win, because it, it feels good. But that winning often comes after struggles and maybe after some of our most difficult losses. I remember when I was in high school, I tried out for the soccer team. And I'd played a little bit of soccer, but, but not a whole lot. But I was tall and had pretty good hands. So one day as we were doing the conditioning, the coach, he threw the ball at me and I caught it. And he just looked at me and he said, you're the goalie. We had practice and conditioning for the next couple of weeks. And then he told us that there were too many players and that they were going to have to cut some off the team. I thought, it's not going to be me. I've played sports my whole life. I've never been cut by a team. Later that week, as practice was done, we went and there was a list posted on the door of the gym. And on that list was who was on the team. And my name wasn't on the list. And I truthfully couldn't believe it. I was cut. That was one of the lowest days for me in high school because it just felt like such huge failure and loss. Cut, just like that. Well, the next day I went and talked to the soccer coach, not to beg to get on the team, but really just asking if I could help. And he said yes. So I was the one who got out soccer balls, who set up the goals, who, who put out the cones. And all the setup, all the takedown work, that was me. And then during practice, I'd have to run and grab supplies for the team. But sometimes the coach would go, hey, Dave, go, go get back in the goal. We need an extra goalie for this practice. So I did. And day after day, I'd run and do my errands. And they'd say, hey, Dave, go get in the goal. Two weeks later, the coach called me in and said, listen, I've reconsidered. You've been here. You're back on the team. And it was one of those yes moments. I'd gone through the loss, the, the struggle, the, the frustration, and here was the win. Sometimes winning and victory comes after some of our hardest defeats. Today you're going to hear more about the U.S. women's soccer team. Back in 2011 when they were playing in the World Cup, in the quarterfinal game, they came back for one of the most epic wins of all time. They were at a high, but just a little bit longer, and they could, they could claim the World Cup. But just a few days later, they lost in the finals, and it was one of the most difficult defeats they'd ever faced. I tell you, they were dejected. They were lost. Some of them thought, soccer's over for me. It was done. But just four years later, as they came back for the next World Cup, that team, that U.S. women's soccer team, came back and went all the way through the finals and won the World Cup. In fact, they scored three goals in the first 16 minutes of the game. No one's ever done that. In fact, when they scored that, that third goal, the, the Telemundo sportscaster, he did the goal, and he held it for 40 seconds. I bet you can't even come close to holding it for 40 seconds. Don't do it just yet. But he did that goal because it was one of the most exciting games ever. Victory, winning sometimes comes after the most difficult defeats. I have one more great story I want to tell you before we finish up. But hang on just for a second. Hey, you know what? In the Bible, the greatest victory of all time came just dazed after one of the greatest defeats Jesus had been doing miracles and teaching and bringing people life. 
And the religious leaders and the political leaders of the day, they hated him for that. And they made up some phony charges against him and they arrested him. And eventually, you kind of know the story, they, they nailed him to a cross and they took Jesus' life. All of his followers, his friends, his family, they thought it was over. I mean, what do you do after that? All that Jesus and all had said, all that he had done, it was gone. The biggest letdown, the biggest defeat ever. But it wasn't the end of the story. Three days after Jesus rose to life again, and that's what Easter is all about, Jesus came to life so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be set free, so that we could really have life. The greatest victory, the most epic victory in the history of the world came three days after the biggest defeat. Now, months after that resurrection, our guy Peter, you know, the guy we've been talking about all week, he gathered with a group of Jesus followers, and they met in an upper room in the city of Jerusalem. And in that time, God gave them his spirit, his Holy Spirit, along with power and courage. And they shared about Jesus everywhere they went in languages that that so many didn't even understand. And they told how anyone could have life in Jesus. Peter even stood up in front of thousands of people. Now remember, he was just a fisherman, but God was with him. And Peter told people about Jesus and how that anyone could turn away from the sin and the wrong that they had done, and they could find forgiveness in Jesus. Do you know what? That's true even for all of us today, no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are. You see, every one of us has had failures and losses. Every one of us has done things wrong. But Jesus gives us a way to be forgiven and to know him as our Lord and leader. This is what Jesus said in this famous verse from the Bible. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's found in John 3.16. And here's the truth of it. You can believe in Jesus and have forgiveness. You can go to heaven someday. The greatest win, the greatest, most epic victory ever, it comes from Jesus. So I want to ask you just to close your eyes right now and bow your heads. And in just a moment, I'm going to pray a prayer, and I'm going to ask you to pray it along with me. And this is a chance for you to invite Jesus Christ into your life, to to confess what you've done and to put your belief in him. And you can begin a relationship with Jesus Christ to choose to follow after him. So say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. And thank you for going to the cross to pay the price for my sin. Thank you, Lord, that you came back to life. Lord, I I confess my sin. I know that I've done things wrong. But I ask you to forgive me. And I pray, Lord, that you would set me free I choose to follow you. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I want to thank you for being part of this epic week. I'm glad that you've had a chance to learn more about the Bible and more about Jesus. Now, if you have any questions, I want you to make sure to ask your leader. Because you may have questions about the Bible or about Peter or about Jesus or about God. And they may not know all the answers. I know I don't know all the answers. But we can sure find out. But don't walk away with questions that you'll always wonder about. And just so you know, this isn't the end. I want to challenge you to read your Bible on your own. Follow Jesus. Find a good church that that reads the Bible and follows the Bible. And go. You'll find friends and people that really do love you and care about you. Don't miss out on living an epic life as you follow Jesus.